you may think that it's coming, it's not so common sense that we're dealing with. Oh, hello there. Hi. It just, it just won't do it. Ah, oh, damn it. Do you like, do you move to a different spot when you do it or something? It's like the only no. thing that it doesn't pick up for you. I can, can we get it again? Can we, can we get it again? Okay. Hi. Perfect. Worked perfect that time welcome in everybody i'm jalopy with me as always the lovely skylo how you doing everybody good to see you good to see you it's season three episode seven we're already getting some subs in the chat uh thank you guys dave great and demontek coming in hot appreciate it um we see you all of you out there in the live chat we appreciate you if you guys are listening to us on a podcast later on Thank you so much for the support. Appreciate you guys. Uh, if you're driving down the road to make your commute to work a little bit better and you're listening to Not So Common Sense because you thought to yourself, Self, I need to, I need to be smarter. I need to read rooms better. How could I do that? And you thought, oh yeah, I'll listen to the Not So Common Sense podcast. Well, look out. There's a bird. <laughs> But thank you, and we hope uh, you are having an amazing day. And uh, our chat is saying how we need a a sound effect of you just saying hi that I can hit <laughs> that just plays. I can actually do that with my <laughs> with my Go XLR. I could just literally do that. But it still would probably not come through to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, fun. it's not coming through. I can record it so that it comes through the mic and you'll actually be able to hear it. Ah, I gotcha, I gotcha, So I gotcha. it's not, like, giving me that raw. I just, that's going to feel so weird, just me, like, pushing it instead of me going, hi. You I don't, don't like it. You don't I like don't it raw? Like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it raw. I don't like it pre-recorded. Ah, <laughs> 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 Moving on. Welcome in, everybody, though. Appreciate it. We tried to do this episode last week, and um, we had some internet issues. And it wouldn't be a, uh, a Jalopy and Skylo event if it didn't have technical issues. Yeah, there were, yeah, there were issues some way, uh, some shape, somehow. But we, uh, I think it was the weather last week. Did, does the weather really affect the internet that much? Yes. I mean, you got to remember that a lot of the things that we do, especially with the internet and stuff, it's all frequencies. It's all energies. And when you have all these storms going on and all this electricity in the air, it's going to fuck with electronics. It's just science. Did you just make that up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you just made that up. <laughs> feel like you just pulled that out of the sky. Well, that's appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, we we've had a, a fairly decent couple days here where I'm at. So hopefully the internet will stay stable now. Uh, how's the weather been in New York? Miserable. It's been absolutely miserable. Like every time you're like, it's raining. I'm like, yeah, same here. It's just raining across the goddamn country. It's just cloudy. I and honestly, I'm I hate when it's like winter here and it just fucking rains mm. because we're supposed to have snow. I'm expecting snow. I want my seasons. Give me my fucking seasons. And then there's no snow and I'm sitting here like everything's wet and gross like it's spring but it's cold. The rain is for the spring. That's when everything is nice and it's warmer. It's warmer wetness. I can deal with that. The cold wetness, no. It turns into ice. Okay. The snow is harder. You can see it. I, I could play with it. You know the worst part know. about the cold? Mm. Like the wintertime stuff? It's not even the temperature. The temperature I can handle. It's the wind. It's the wind when it's cold. When It, it feels mm. like yeah. knives. Yeah. Needles mm. just, just stabbing and into you. That's what it is right now, especially when it rains. Like, it's like that little tiny bits of rain, and then it's blowing right at you, and it's like glass shards are entering your fucking pores. It's, I hate it. It's the worst. That's what's wrong Absolute with my face. Worst. 
Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> She's just been hit by a bunch of shards. <laughs> well. Um, there is a chance that we have good weather for a little bit so hopefully next week's episode will go through as well but uh we're we we tried to start last week's episode honestly it just we're, we're very transparent translucent no translucent is invisible transparent is the word <laughs> we're very transparent here about everything that that's going on we don't we don't uh hide anything from you guys uh, yeah. we did try to do this episode last week it did just didn't work the internet just would not allow us to do it so we are going to try to do it this week and hopefully you uh i don't think you missed anything from last week and if or if you caught it and you're you're here again well you're just going to hear it again i guess uh but we didn't really get to even get started last week so should we actually Honestly. start this episode in sky before yes. the internet's like hey you <laughs> can't do your show <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh well let's start with uh, <laughs> why is this our first one <laughs> <laughs> because why is this our first one she's she's trying to just trigger me off the bat everybody but mars Candy bars. <laughs> Is that what they are? The Mars Candy Company or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Didn't we? Didn't you say you had to change it? I don't know. It's Hershey's. No, it, we thought. I thought it was Hershey's, but it's Mars. Oh, it's Mars. Okay, yeah. so it's Mars. So they have their M and M's, right? And they have all the different ones: peanut butter, or yeah, mm -hmm. peanut butter, caramel, uh, just plain M and M's, peanut M and M's. Well, they've got a new one out. And several new ones. Well, I'm only talking about the one currently. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Got, I honestly don't know the other one. But they're they're both in the in the same same thing that we watched. Oh, I don't have that up. But it's uh, <laughs> it's have you you've seen it then? So the yeah. M and M's reveals a new packaging with. Only the female M&M characters. Only the female M&M characters. Yeah. And they're upside down. Which represents supporting women flipping the status quo. Whoa. I know. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> um, um. Flipping the status quo. And it says this on the packaging. Like it literally says, supporting women flipping the status quo, and it's got three apparently of the female character M and M's on it, and they're. I, I was this is this a problem? <laughs> Not like is them putting this on here a problem? Was this a problem in the? Like who who? <laughs> Can we can we can we go a little bit deeper into this because it's not just about that. Like I you you like the main point of this whole entire thing. That's fine. You can have female M and M's because there's male M and M's. Who gives a flying fuck? It's fucking candy, right? The problem is, is that we've had the green M and M for forever. She was the sexy little fiery M and M. We loved her. No mm -hmm. problems. They decided to add. A girlfriend for her. They just gave her a girlfriend. We're like, you know what? You're a lesbian now. And we're gonna give you a chocolate M and M. Here's a here's a brown M and M candy. Now mm -hmm. she she's a couple. Then they gave us a purple M and M. First of all, where the fuck did the purple M and M come from? I don't. Are, why? I don't know. Why? I I do like the color purple. Not the movie or the book or whatever, but <laughs> I don't. I haven't seen that. But I haven't I read that. But the, I do the like purple. purple. <laughs> The, the, the purple M&M looks like the yellow M&M, so it's big. Mm. And it's supposed to represent body positivity. It's a female M&M that's big and purple. And it is representing body positivity. Let's break this down, people. It's a fat M&M that is representing candy to other people... Who are heavy set and wanting them to eat more candy, which is going to continue to keep them that way. It's not healthy. Well, they're they're appealing to their audience. It's 
it's like stupidity at its finest. Right. They're they're it, on their end. It's intelligence. It's it's massively intelligent because it's like, oh, who eats us? The fat people. And, to me, this is like if I was if I was heavy set, and I was all about the body positively. You you know me. I'm if you're healthy, I don't give a flying fuck what the hell you look like as long as you're fucking healthy. Cool. Be with that. But this grimace looking motherfucker over here. It's supposed to represent me. Um, am I stupid? Yeah. Like they're blatantly making well, fun here, of where's us. Where's the Where's the small M M&M and M then for the skinny people? Yeah. They don't get their own M M&M? and M. Only the heavy set people. What about us short people? <laughs> where's the all red pack M M&M and M for us gingers? I want to <laughs> know. But no, really though, was was this a problem for people? Like, what, like, what, pro- okay, by them doing this, right, it's fine, but what did they solve? Nothing, nothing. All they did was appeal to a marketing, a, a, a little a target group of people, and they said, how can we manipulate them in a way to say, hey, look, we're joining your side, buy our product, yeah. That's that's literally all they're doing. And there are people out there that are like, oh, my God, these M&Ms, they understand me. They represent me. They're me. No, they're fucking not. Right. That's something that I was told when I was really young that stuck with me was if it's a business, they want your money. They're after that's your it. money. And they're that's all they money. care about. They have marketing for a reason. They mm-hmm. have they have networking and researchers for a reason. I'm just, like this is it. Do you think people just saw this and that that were not aware of women? Apparently, that women exist and that the, the, the I don't know what status quo they're trying to change. But uh, mm-hmm. do you think somebody like didn't see this or saw this Eminem and was like, oh? I need to support women now, and I need to support heavy set women now, and only women now, actually. Yeah. Because... What about the what about the body positivity for for male dys- dysmorphia, mm-hmm. for body dysmorphia? Like, there are so many guys, especially in Hollywood. Like, um, there was a an article that I was reading about Robert Pattinson saying that he literally ate potatoes for two weeks straight because of his of how insecure he was. About his body. Like, that's fucked up, people. Wait, but we're, it, wasn't we're... he trying to be Batman? I'd probably be insecure, too, honestly. <laughs> Fair point. But still, <laughs> like, there's just I, so I, much. I feel like I would struggle feeling good if I knew I had to be Batman. And then I looked at myself in the mirror. I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I got some work to do. <laughs> Why did they give me this role? It's potatoes only from here on out. I, I gotta balk up. <laughs> but like, it's a problem. It's a problem. The, these companies are manipulating us and trying to feed us all of this crap that literally... You think, when I grab a, a pack of M&M's, I look at the fucking flavor, and the and I rip the package open, and I pour the shit in my mouth. I don't fucking look... Oh, look what kind of person there's... You know, there's a... there's um There was one with a uh, an M&M with a sombrero and a fucking poncho one day. Mm-hmm. I swear to God. And it was like the chili M&M's. It was like the special edition chili M&M's. They also had Britain M&M's. Which was like English toffee and like chocolate. Yeah. It's not necessary. Like none of that, none of this is necessary. Apparently they've got this in all three varieties. They got the peanut butter, the peanut M&M's and the the original. What do you call the, you just call them M&M's, right? Yeah, chocolate M&M's, just M&M's. So like if I say I'm going to get some M&M's. Do you want some? And I bring back M and M's with peanuts. That's not what you are going. That's not what you're expecting. You're expecting just the regular M and M's. Correct. If you're if you're saying like see I'll bring my back whole life, that. anytime I've heard somebody say M and M's, the main one to me immediately was the yellow packet with the peanuts. The peanuts. Always. That's always been like the main M and M's. The the which the, is so funny considering that you're allergic to peanuts. I know. And M and M's 
is a a like you when you hear M and M's, what what pack do you immediately picture in your head? <laughs> For me, I picture the caramel ones now, but back in the day, it would be the brown one. Really, I've never once picked. To me, the brown one was a a a sub. It, uh, it was a it was a, a, a secondary <laughs> a secondary M and M, and then along came the peanut butter, which was a third. It was third. And then there was the caramel, and then there was you know the toothpaste Pretzels and the rice whatever they and put the in mint. <laughs> like yeah. when somebody says, "Hey, I'm gonna get some M and M's," my usual follow up question, I like I don't assume anything anymore. My follow up question is like, "Oh, okay, which kind?" Because I know there's like literally like a hundred kinds them, of M and M's. I think I called them plain M and M's, plain M and M's, peanut M and M's. Yeah, plain is another one that I've heard people yet say. Yeah. But honestly, um, I think my favorite is the peanut butter m ms <laughs> I love the peanut. I just love peanut butter. I don't remember if I had those or not. I think I did, I just but I'm love not sure. Peanut butter. But I do like the peanut m ms too. I, the plain m ms I could live my whole life without ever having had one of those. I do not. I'm not a fan of those. The only reason why I like the plain m ms is because it's the only one that I can neurotically open up a pack and pour into my mouth without even thinking about it, but all the other M&Ms, mm. for some odd reason, I have to separate them by color. That's and where you gotta group. go with Reese's Pieces. I know! Yeah. It's easier that way. Those, and I just, like, You want to know a funny mouth. story? I remember the very first pack of Reese's Pieces that I ever had. The very first pack. Are you being attacked over there? No, sorry. <laughs> Okay, it sounded like you were being attacked for a moment. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Uh, live on our podcast. I just I just had a me moment. It's okay. fine. <laughs> uh, that threw me for a loop. I don't even know what we were talking about. But no, uh, yeah, the Reese's Pieces. I remember my very first pack that I ever got. Was I know, that also I remember your very the, first orgasm? I remember the store that I, I was at. No. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> it wasn't i don't know how we got how you made that jump just now i don't know where how uh, we got your, there your love for peanut butter oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's astounding <laughs> but yeah i don't know i just uh, to wrap this up on the <laughs> the candy to candy wrap this up we <laughs> we are uh we're, the joke wasn't funny. The <laughs> chuckle was what got me. <laughs> we are... Well, what's funny is nobody can even tell you're laughing when you laugh. Because it just goes silent. There's just nothing. It just sounds like you're just not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's unfortunate. Uh, no. It, it, my point is that we're getting so far away from things that actually matter. That I think we're doomed. Honestly, yeah. I I think that we're at a point where most people are now brainwashed. Mm -hmm. um, and they think that what everybody is doing is for them. But it's really not. <laughs> it's really not. Everything, everybody has an agenda. There's an agenda for everything. Like our agenda. Our agenda is to help you guys realize that people sense. Yeah, that people have an agenda like that and don't want you to use common sense. You know? Like it doesn't help them if we use common sense. So our mission statement then, what is our agenda? Our mission statement is to make sure everybody has common sense. That's it. That's that's all I got. Learn how to read the, the room. room. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's so much better. Let's go with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this next guy, and he he read the room, and then made the room his own by <laughs> in a creepy way. Kinda. We say creepy because your first initial thought when you read this and hear about this is, "Yo, that's creepy." But I'm telling you, I'm trying to see it from his eyes. I, You know me. I am an empath. I will try to look at things through the other person's eyes as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I I get it. I get it. But let me let me read the title of this 
article here. I was heartbroken when my wife died, so I brought her back to life for $3,000. Well, uh, that's a weird title, but an Indian man reportedly brought his dead wife back to life after spending nearly 3000 to make it happen. Tapas Sandilia uh, lost his wife... Uh, Indrani, in 2021 during COVID. Before her death, uh, he told she told her husband that uh, she, in the event, if she passes away, she'd like him to create a silicone model of her to keep him company. See, this is this is where I'm. I have a problem because, like, the title says, "I was heartbroken when my wife died, so I brought her back to life," indicating that, like, this is why he did it was because he was heartbroken. No, this was just her dead wish. Her dying wishes were like, yeah. "Not, nah, bitch, you're bringing me back to life yeah. so I can watch you for the rest of your fucking life." They have they have a uh, contradicting <laughs> title. They have a contradicting title compared to the what actually happened. Actually Clickbait. Happened. It's clickbait. Basically. Everything is clickbait. <laughs> There's an agenda, folks, is the <laughs> theme of today's episode. That so he 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 did. He brought her back to life essentially by making a replica of her out of silicone. You know, having one of those places that that make it. Uh, it cost him three thousand dollars. Looks just like her. She, I mean, it definitely looks just like her. I thought it. Like, I legitimately thought it was a real person for a moment. <laughs> you did. I remember you saying, like, oh, shit. Like, is that her? I was like, that's, that's the doll. He's yeah. got his arm around her. and I, Like, it's creepy. I don't like it. It like, is what? creepy in the sense of... It is creepy in the sense of... How realistic it is? Yeah. Is it, that and if he's... If he truly, I don't know. It, it's not. It's just creepy because it's. I think it's creepy because you don't like dolls. Yeah, yeah. I don't, especially because like. All right, this is weird to me because like, my brain goes to like, what if like her spirit comes back and like goes inside of it, or like, what if he gets like dementia and then doesn't realize like, holy fuck, my dead wife is like back from the grave and like freaks the fuck out, or like. <laughs> What's he going to do? Murder her? It's it's not real. <laughs> Probably. Or, like, it might make him go crazier. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many things that could go horribly wrong. I don't like it. It's weird. It's like, if I died and I was married, I'd be like, go find new pussy. Just, it's fine. Just, it's, <laughs> I'm dead. I, I don't care. Just go. Yeah. Adventure. Live life. Yeah. Be happy. Like, go do things. You're free. <laughs> <laughs> you're free now i so let me like i said i was trying to see it through his eyes right uh, and why he did it and if it is something that genuinely keeps him company if he's maybe he's just not ready to move on yet or maybe he never will be or maybe he already had moved on before she passed who knows mm -hmm. but if he is using it for just general t t a general Companion. way to fight loneliness maybe he doesn't have anybody to talk to you know maybe he doesn't have any any uh family pets or, or family. pets or anything yeah. uh and this is going to be way easier to take care of than a pet <laughs> you just gotta wash it a little I mean, bit in just, and out just I wasn't even going there with it. I, Listen, I don't know that it doesn't say anything about him having a physical relationship with this. You're going to tell me that he's not. I, I don't know. I'm guaranteeing you he is. First I off, it's know. a dude. First off, it's a dude. And it's a doll of his wife. You, any guy would do it. I don't know. I just think... And this was more of a, like, it feels like it was more of a religious thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's Am no way I, I think I'm too pure for the internet. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm starting to believe that, which is fucking weird because you're not. <laughs> but also, there was a Chinese widower who did the same thing, but had a sex doll manufacturer make his model when Why she was he... younger. Okay, go ahead. And then had another doll made when the second one wore out. The second one 
or yeah out. that's a whole different thing that's a whole different person it's a whole different so- story <laughs> I don't know. I I just I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. Well, maybe like he it. should move to Colorado with her. <laughs> See how stupid that sounds? No, you just sound stupid. Saying we it we had it. We, so <laughs> Skylo and I had a debate <laughs> right before the show about if it's pronounced Colorado. Or Colorado. Colorado. She says Colorado. <laughs> I say Colorado. It's not Rado. It's not a T. It's Rado. Not a rad. Duh, duh, rad. Rado. Like rad. rad. Because Colorado is like, it's rad. Uh, they are rad. But yeah, maybe he should move there because they have just legalized psychedelic mushrooms. And that might make his experience... With a this doll better. a little more real. <laughs> I That's don't know. Disturbing. I can't I can't personally say that I know how what it does, how it makes you feel, but I'd imagine in this scenario it would have to <laughs> make things feel a little more real. <laughs> uh but yeah, is it that crazy Colora- Colorado? I can't even say it normal. Col- <laughs> I can't say it without just adding that rado. Rado. That rado. <laughs> You're being an asshole. You know who would why. say it is an actually person. <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> actually, it's called Colorado. That's how I'm hearing it. But I'm going to remember that every time you say, you know, it's NASA and NASA. It's not. It's N-A-S-A. There's no W. It's not NASA. <laughs> It's not. It's not. There's no. Colorado. It's no. Oh, you're not Australian. It's Colorado. It's not a rat. It's I'm not, not saying the rat. Way, Colorado. That's the way it's, how, it's how it sounds. Like you're you saying rat. Sound like a rat. But they are legalizing everything these days, except for weed, which is crazy to me. <laughs> well, this was actually really good. Well, with, I think Oregon. It's Oregon, yeah, Oregon. Or Oregon. Oregon. It's not a Oregon. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Oregon. I'm, I'm looking for Oregon. I'm looking for a new co-host <laughs> once again, everybody. <laughs> looking for a new cloud. Okay, but like they already have this set in place, but I think it's only in medical treatment for like and they, they, they dose you, like, so you can't just go to, like, a dispensary. Right. it's like a like, micro-dosing, I think. Yeah. So it kind of helps, like, stimulate some, like, of your your neurological pathways or whatever. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I don't know if you heard this. There was another article that I read right after this one that they are decriminalizing all hard drugs in uh, a town in fucking Canada. Like meth and heroin and shit. They're decriminalizing it? Yes. Why? Meaning it's legal? You can just... Yes. (laughs) Some dude already opened up a shop. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Like, If they're like, hey, you can sell meth now. (laughs) Why wouldn't you go sell meth in your store? (laughs) You're going to be rich. Like... (laughs) What do you mean? In the, the town I grew up in, you are a billionaire. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It's crazy. I think there's uh, there's a limit on what we should probably legalize. I, I'm 100% for legalizing cannabis, obviously. There's too, too much good that it does. If we're gonna, if mm-hmm. you're gonna, hey, listen, this is a hot take right here. I, and I, mm-hmm. I don't. I have. I've been dropping more hot takes lately. But if you're going to, <laughs> if you're going to make something legal versus illegal, make alcohol illegal before you make cannabis illegal. Honestly, genuinely, honestly, because there's not is... a good thing that comes from alcohol. 
Like, this comes from somebody who, like, I used to be a heavy drinker. I used to drink all the time. I, I loved going out, like, with my friends, like, going to bars, going to clubs, like, drinking at home. Like, what I used to have a drink, like, with every meal almost, except for breakfast. Well, sometimes I'd have an Irish coffee. Depending on the day, <laughs> like, I was a heavy drinker. I felt worse in my life drinking than I ever did smoking weed or having edibles or taking like a tincture well, or something. there's also a ton of health benefits for smoking. Yeah. A, a ton. More than people could ever imagine. And you don't have to smoke it. We say smoking, but we just mean cannabis in general. In you general. can You can eat it. You can eat mm -hmm. gummies. You, you can, can drink eat, it. You can drink it. You can put tincture, tinc tinctures under your tincture. tongue. Tinctures? Tinctures? Tinctures. Poor little tink tink. Uh, uh, we <laughs> we have so many ways these days to to get the cannabis in your system, and honestly, uh, it, it should be they should have cannabis bars instead of alcohol bars, in my opinion. Yeah. And I know there's people Ain't out there that shit? are big drinkers. They're going to be like, "Oh, you're an idiot. You shouldn't take away alcohol." Yada yada yada. I, it, you're fighting a losing battle, honestly. Yeah. You, there's no chance that you're going to convince me or anybody that the that alcohol is better than for you than cannabis. Yeah. Yet it's here just, we are. Cannabis is illegal. It's just in it's a lot it's of places. ridiculous to me that like people still argue about this. Like, I just I can't. I just can't. <laughs> like I, it kills your body like alcohol like literally deteriorates your insides it doesn't serve any purpose that is beneficial for you now when you get older red wine a cup a day fine it helps your heart but like there's people who drink bottles upon bottles a day like that's not mm -hmm. what's helping you like that's not They're like oh it's okay. healthy it's red wine it's healthy is it? <laughs> is it Susan? <laughs> One glass is okay when you're older, and it's only during like a certain group of age. Like you can't like people like start drinking in their twenties. They're like it's healthy. No, when you get into like your fifties, then it's going to help you. Going into your fifties while drinking it, it's going to hurt you. Mm. <laughs> like. It's, oh, yeah. it's just science. I don't know. I don't know about it. Science. Believe it or <laughs> don't. Leave it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Moving on out of this world because we've all lost our minds. Let's go into space in our next segment. Space case. Which there's some wild stuff happening uh, in 2023. They're, they there have is. five space exploration missions already planned that are happening 2023 uh, the first one is jupiter's icy moons they're going to go explore the icy moons of jupiter in uh, april yeah that's like right around the corner guys that is exciting that is exciting uh <laughs> it's the european <laughs> space agency esa they're set to launch the jupiter icy moons explorer SA? Essay. Sorry. Essay. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it says European, but it's actually Hispanic. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And no, it's. Uh, I was before I was rudely interrupted. I was saying. Uh, the it it's called the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer is the name of the, the ship, I guess that's going. That's pretty cool. What's the next one happening? Ooh, SpaceX's Starship. My boy Lon Lon. Mm, yeah. Yeah. This is this te still terrifies me. Yeah. So they're going to be sending the Star the SpaceX Starship. Uh, they don't have a date announced for it yet, but uh it's the first orbital test flight of the super heavy Starship spacecraft and a highly anticipated uh, it's highly anticipated to occur in 2023. It'll be the largest spacecraft capable of carrying humans from Earth to destinations in space. They're doing it, Sky. It's happening. 
I don't know if you've muted or not. I don't well, know if yep, we've lost I did, you. I'm an idiot. Nope, I'm an idiot. What scares me about this, though, is like people are like, oh, yeah, we're going to get to go to space. I can't wait to like do this. That's awesome and all. Like, I'm excited for that, too. But, like, here's my thing. People who, like, astronauts, like, they, they go through months and years of physical yeah. training on their bodies. My guess is this craft is set up to bypass that. I would hope so. Because otherwise, everyone is just going to either right. implode because or explode they're not, inside the ship. not everybody's bodies are going to be capable of going to space. No, with, there's going to be a lot of people go, who like, won't be able to. Like, while conscious, anyway. You yeah. know what I mean? So I feel like it is going to be one of those get in a pod and go to sleep for a while type of things. That would be wild. I don't know. I don't like it. I'd rather have my own little tiny personal spaceship. I don't <laughs> I just don't want. I don't want other people in my space. No, I'd be okay <laughs> with just like. Climbing into a little pod and them a just hooking bust. me up to an IV and <laughs> saying night night and then waking up on Mars that'd be dope. <laughs> or you know waking up while your pod is hurling into space because your ship blew up from right. passing the atmosphere. Right. <laughs> Wake up dead. <laughs> What's the next one that's happened? They don't have a date on that one yet, but. The next one is pretty much what they were talking about. So if they have if the starship SpaceX is a success, they are um, going to be launching something called the Dear Moon. Dear Moon crew is a long awaited project which will take members of the public on a six day trip around the moon and back. And it's due for launch on Starship was originally planned for 2023. They've been planning this since 2018. Which, again, is going to be crazy. It's the first true deep space tourism launch, but that goes back to what I just said. It's a tourism thing, and I feel like these people are going to be like, yeah, let's go, and then bad things are going to happen. Why do I feel like it's only going to be available to the elites? To the, oh, yeah, to the 1%. You know how expensive that's going to be to like take all these people into space? Right. Or if they make it really like cheap, like what if they're like trying to get all the poor people into space and then they dump them out there? I'm, I mean, all right. If you're dumb <laughs> enough to go do it. Oh no, Eight the space billion crash. people. <laughs> Just like... There's eight billion people on this planet. We are a. Dropping them off at the moon. We are a rash to Earth. <laughs> to our planet we we are a disease that's just spreading like wildfire of stupid people that's all it's, we are the earth is so much better without worse. humans on it it literally is just getting worse and worse every day i this this is just a side note i tried to make an appointment for i need to get an mri done right for my shoulder because my shoulder's been fucked I called the place that, like, I got the referral for. And I was just like, hey, what's up? They're like, hey, we know who you are. I was like, cool. When can I come in? And can it be on a Monday? Because, like, that's usually my days. I Like, that I have a car and I can, like, do other things. And, like, he goes, all right, let me check my schedule. He's like, okay, how's Thursday, March, something, something? And I was just like, no. I said, first off. Why is it in March? Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, it, that's a Thursday. And he goes, well, that's the only available time that your doctor could see you. I'm like, what do you mean my doctor? Like, I don't have a doctor there. This is an MRI spot. And he goes, well, your doctor is this doctor and that doctor needs to see you. I said, why? <laughs> why? Just give me to any doctor, whoever's available. I was like, there are hundreds of MRI shops all across Long Island. I could go to any one of them. Like, what does that matter? They're like, oh, because they don't like that. Let me see if they'll let me do that. So he puts me on hold, comes back and goes, okay, so they're going to let me do that. His next available is Tuesday, February. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to call somewhere else. Yeah. I just hung up the phone like, motherfucker. In LA, I've had to have MRIs done. Like When I had my spine surgery, I had to have like four MRIs done. It was stupid, mm -hmm. but it, it was... Uh, I just walked into a place on my own at my own 
<laughs> yeah, leisure. He's yeah, like, hey, they're like, I they're like, hey, here's a bunch of different spots in LA you can go to get your MRI. Just take this paper in and yeah. go in whenever. And I called to make an appointment. They're like, oh no, you can just come in whenever. Yeah, literally when I went to get my hysterectomy, they were, that's how he did it. He was just like, here's a whole bunch of places that you can go to. Just go to any one of these and give them this paper. This is your referral. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. But these people were like, no, you must call this place and use that. I'm like, bitch, no, I'm going somewhere else. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But uh, yeah, that's, that's wild. I don't know how they're going to do, I don't know how they're going to do the, the payments for this, I don't think they're going to be to to well, say you want to go travel around the moon and back. I I don't know how they're going to. I would assume it's going to be around the same out. price of like a, a cruise of some sort, but like maybe a little bit more expensive, like a fancier no, cruise. Ro- they got to pay to go. That's like way more expensive than a ship on the water. Think about True. rocket fuel alone. True. Rocket fuel alone. Look at the price of plane well, how much, tickets. How much... For me to fly to see my family six hours away and back. Six hours away to not even leave the atmosphere. Would be like a thousand dollars these days. What are you even talking about? No, it's not. Not anymore. You want to bet? I do. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know I... what secret airline you're going through, but... Expedia. Uh, <laughs> I promise you, there's they're at least three hundred to four hundred dollars. Yeah, that sounds more plausible. They're not no no dollars. no one way. Oh no, I can literally get a ticket to go from New York to L.A. for like a hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, that's New York. Those are big cities. That's why I said to go see my family in Ohio. That would be cheaper because nobody wants to fucking go I'm to I'm telling Ohio. you, it's not cheaper. It's it's cheaper to fly from big city to big city than it is to go to the to the smaller places. I promise I you it is. I don't know about it. I do know I about it. As know somebody that's it. lived in L.A. for 10 years whose family lived in Ohio, I promise you <laughs> it's ridiculous how much more it is. I could fly to New York right now cheaper than I could to fly to Ohio. I <laughs> guarantee it. I don't know about it. I do. But the next one is a, it's India's private space launch. Uh, It says, while SpaceX is the most prominent private space launch company, there are many others developing their own series of launchers around the world. Skyroot Aerospace, which successfully launched its uh, Vikram S rocket in November of 2022, is soon to become the first private Indian company to launch a satellite. That's pretty dope. So we could like we could start our own not so common sense space program. That would be dope. I want to do that. Imagine like a big cloud logo. Like all of our logo <laughs> stuff is just all like cloud stuff because we're like going up in space through the clouds. <laughs> our fucking rocket ship is just a giant cloud with my <laughs> face on it. <laughs> well, and our. Space program and not so common sense has officially come to an end. <laughs> it was long lived, folks. We hope you enjoyed the ride. <laughs> but that, that is cool, though, that there's there's multiple. I love I've always wondered why we never had more of that. I don't know. Just people don't have the money, I guess. Probably. It's expensive as shit. But there's people that do have that kind of money. They're just greedy and they won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, like they because a lot of people you gotta remember, people have a hard time seeing things or visualizing things that they can't physically see. Yeah. So the thought about going into space because it hasn't been shown that people can just go into space, people are gonna be like, oh, that's impossible. That's gonna take thousands of years and lots of money, and I want to live right now with all the stuff. Like, okay, well, you do you. Fuck off. Okay, I'm getting reports here from our in field analyst Dave. That uh, our first that the first seat for that rocket was auctioned off for twenty eight million dollars. Now for the SpaceX rocket, yeah, yeah, for the SpaceX one. Uh, now, if that information is wrong, be mad at Dave, not me. But that's that's who can afford that? Only the one percent can afford to do that. 
Well, that's for the SpaceX. That's not that's not the Dear Moon mission. The Dear Moon is supposed to be for people who can't go on uh, SpaceX. Okay, so we need to find out the it's, price of the Dear Moon. Yeah, tickets. because the Dear Moon is specifically for tourism. So they're going to market it for people that are the consumers, not the one percent, because the one percent are not the consumers right here. The one percent are the ones that are making the money off of the consumers. So this is going to be affordable for people that can so do it. So would you do it? If it was affordable, no. if it was like, like, like you said, to get a cruise, if it was about the same price to go on a cruise as it is to get on this rocket and take a trip around the moon and back to the planet, would you do it? I would do it the day I found out I was dying. <laughs> okay. And only then, not That's a day fair. sooner. That's fair. Because I, like, my luck is it would literally be like, oh, we're going to the moon. And then we would pass through the atmosphere. And then a fucking tiny little spacecraft that size of a fucking chicken nugget is going to fly through our goddamn window and kill me and the rest of us. So, like, that's a thing. That's a possibility. I mean, but that could happen walking to your mailbox. It can. But you know what? The the odds of me getting hit by a tiny chicken nugget sized alien spacecraft is a lot higher up in space and down here by my mailbox. But we're in space. Yeah, but there's an atmosphere that's protecting us. So when it falls from the space into our atmosphere, it explodes because it's the size of a goddamn chicken nugget. But when it's in space and it's hurling at like millions of light years speed, it's going to blast right into our cabin and kill us all. I don't know about it. <laughs> I really need to start writing books or something. Uh, did you hear about the comet that's nearby? Um. Yes, I have. All right. I don't know why you said it like that. Because <laughs> you asked me like that. Uh, there's a comet that only orbits the sun <laughs> once every 50,000 years, and it's expected to be visible from Earth until, wait, with the naked eye, not with the telescope, with the naked eye, uh, until February. About I think they said around the second week of February. Uh, yeah, by the second week of February, yeah, you'll still be able to see it, but that's when it'll start fading out to the, to the naked eye. Uh, but it's a comet that hasn't been here since the, the Neanderthals were here, which is still now, because let's be honest. We are Neanderthals. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're still very much Neanderthals. <laughs> we are surrounded by neanderthals if you think you're not one you probably are you probably are <laughs> but that's kind of cool maybe we're going to see a meteor that people that the Neander- real genuine like ca- cavemen saw you know how terrified they must have been when they saw it the first time like just passing by them just <laughs> I, think about the first time anything happened to them. The first time this to them they 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 witnessed mm-hmm. the sun going down. Oh God, For it's real. getting dark. <laughs> Put the fire away. Right. <laughs> Bring back the fire sky. Anything like the first you walk outside, and the first thing you see is a giant dinosaur walking by you. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be a little terrified. That's so sad. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's. I don't need. What is the name of this comet? Do they have a name? C uh, uh, Z T F <laughs> Zwicky <laughs> Transient Facility is who? No, that's who discovered. No, it. that's. <laughs> Comets are cosmic snowballs. Is a is a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a sentence that's, that's said sentence. in the article. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I don't know. Does it have a name? Does this comet have a name? Obviously, it does. Yeah, it's C forward slash twenty twenty two E three. Okay, so that's what I was reading. I just yeah read the CTF. wrong thing. So, yeah, that's a terrible name. They should have named it something like Frosty or something. Yeah, like Haley's Comet. Isn't that like a thing? Right. 
This is a terrible name. Whose job was it to name this? They failed miserably. <laughs> I mean, they probably seen like so many of I mean, them that they're they like, ran out of names. They're like, it's a comet in 2022. Uh, C for comet. Uh, <laughs> 2022. C 2022. That's a good name. But this for is it. the third one we saw, <laughs> Errol. Oh, E3 then. E3. <laughs> Episode 3. <laughs> Bam. But that is cool. <laughs> so it is visible currently to the naked eye. If you were to yeah. go outside, you Can probably have it. to be in an isolated area, I imagine. Yeah, with not a lot of uh, light pollution. What sucks yeah. is that it's been like fucking cloudy since the, since the arrival hurricanes. of this thing. Yeah. In so... California. <laughs> Can't really see Because California the gets hurricanes. That's a thing. <laughs> It's uh, actually, <laughs> actually called typhoons. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is pretty cool. Do they cool, spin though. the opposite way over there? I don't know. We're not in Europe or wherever. Uh, yeah, but like. Speaking you're... of spinning, though, uh, there's a planet spiraling into its star nearby that uh, gives us a glimpse of to how the Earth may end, <laughs> which is fantastic. <laughs> At least we know, and knowing is half the battle. Yeah, so there's a <laughs> planet in a nearby solar system that uh, is spiraling towards its star. You know, we have our star, the sun. That's our star. Mm -hmm. And this planet is crashing, and it's spiraling, and it's being sucked into its own star. And it's going to collide and end. Yes. They estimate that it'll end in about 3 million years. And they yeah. said this is a glimpse of what may actually happen to Earth in the, in the future. Obviously, way longer than 3 million years from now. But, so, you most likely, most of you guys won't still be here. <laughs> yeah. So Some I don't of you think... guys might be frozen until then, but... Unless Lon Lon, my boy Elon... Musk is is here right now because I feel like he's got the capability to like live forever if he wanted. But <laughs> he discovered the fountain of youth and yeah. he just hasn't told anybody. I just think he's got the technology to do it. I just think he, <laughs> he can become pretty much a robot with his consciousness. I was gonna say, I'm like, he's probably already a robot. He could be <laughs> but, very much so. Uh, that's wild though that. Earth could just get sucked into its sun. I mean, I would imagine everything on it would die. Which is instantly, the, yeah, before we even got remotely close to it. Yeah, you would just fry. Yeah. Like, what's crazy is that the planet that is like spiraling into its star is called. It's known as Hot Jupiter. <laughs> so it's already hot, <laughs> and they couldn't come up with a different name. This looks like Jupiter, but it's hot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> it is. It's about to be real hot. <laughs> it's about to be disintegrated <laughs> yeah I, f I feel bad for any life that may be on that planet though do you don't you what if they were planning on invading us then I'm on their side <laughs> <laughs> you heard it That's here fair. first world if we get attacked by aliens I'm joining them <laughs> so I'm on their side they are obviously the superior they beings. They are superior. <laughs> I am putting on my antennas and my tinfoil on my head. <laughs> I'm painting myself the appropriate color. And I am joining <laughs> well, the alien you brigade. Got, you got to be careful with that because they might see you as alienists mm. if you color yourself yeah, as that's them. True. That's true. So. I don't want to be alienists. So... <laughs> I don't it's want to be an ridiculous. ist of any sort, <laughs> ever. Same. <laughs> but that's kind of crazy that uh, that they that it's going to end. But they said that uh, I, I talked about any life forms that are on there. There may not be any, according to the uh, the Pentagon deep dive that they did. Did you mm -hmm. see that, Sky? Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed at that, and I I, I don't truly believe all I of it. I don't believe an ounce of it. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I'm not the only psycho. I don't <laughs> believe it for a second. Apparently, the Pentagon did a deep dive into 
Area 51, right? Mm -hmm. To look into the existence of aliens, alien life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And according to the Pentagon, that's ran by, you know, the government, (laughs) Mm -hmm. they didn't find any. No aliens. No alien life in Area 51. I don't know about I, it. Yeah, I'm kind of... I just... I, uh, I believe that there's no alien life at Area 51. I believe whoever runs... Whoever's controlling the alien life, if there is any here, I believe they are not stupid enough to keep it at Area 51. Where everybody yeah. on the war, on the planet knows knows about yeah. Area Fifty One, uh, unless it's a you know hide in plain sight type of thing. Yeah, yeah. But why would the Pentagon like it's the same? If that's like that's is it like an undercover boss situation we got going on here? That that that, that would be like. One McDonald's employee going to another McDonald's to see if they've got any special nugget sauce. Sure. Because wouldn't they already know about the nugget sauce? Because they're also a McDonald's. But like, no, because sometimes some people keep things for themselves regardless. But I just it, wouldn't feel... the wouldn't the government be just checking in on the government? Isn't that what's no. happening here? No, everything goes by clearance, and everybody follows that clearance to a fucking T. You're on a need to know basis. If you're if you have not if you're not cleared for it, then you don't need to know it. And they don't they don't question it because you question it, and then you get either fired or thrown into jail. Uh, we have beaten. we have breaking information coming in from our reporter in the field, Dave. Uh, it cost apparently one million dollars for one of the board members to book a seat for later this year. Damn, that's it. Okay, I still don't see how that appeals to the masses. That's that's again SpaceX. Oh, not, that's still SpaceX. That's not. Yeah, that's oh, not I thought that dream. was the. No, because they they auctioned the first go around of seats. They auctioned it. So they started it, I think, at like a million and then just said, whoever pays the most will get to go on it. Okay. It's been helping them fund like building the stuff and everything like that. Yeah. But apparently there's no aliens found. I don't believe it for a second. I Well, okay. They said that so far they have seen nothing that indicates intelligent alien life so maybe they have seen alien life but they're just dumb as fucking dog shit yeah but i could go to a town in arkansas and find no intelligent life Mm -hmm. from humans i grew up in a town like that (laughs) (laughs) jeez i can go to i'm sure in wyoming there's a but there's this, a town there's, with no intelligent life. Yes, but here's the thing: the fact that there is no intelligent life on Earth means that somebody would read what they said indicates in, that there is no intelligent life and be like, oh, "Okay, there's no aliens." But like, no, they're just saying there's no smart aliens. How do the, how do we know? We don't. This if is they're all, that this... smart, they're probably staying hidden. Exactly. They're and they're just not going to tell. They us. they could have podcasts <laughs> you know what i mean they could just be talking to you right now you don't know what could be happening out there the i world. am the alien uh they could they could be sky sky could be the alien definitely i'm not the me. alien <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i don't know if you guys think that there's aliens on earth i i 100 believe that there's aliens like there's intelligent life in existence out there other than just our planet it's there's no chance that there isn't as big as existence is there's just yeah z- there's zero percent chance that there's no life out there uh, you'll never change my mind on this nobody yeah will. but there, yeah there's so much of space that we haven't explored do you so. th- do you think there are aliens on earth 
Yes. Me too. You're one of them. You fucking lizard. <laughs> I would a lizard person be an alien? Yes. Yes, you would that's, be an alien. That's lizardist. <laughs> I've just always wanted to call somebody an ist of some sort. <laughs> That's fair. I get called it, so why why can't I call people it? It's fair. It's fair. I'll allow it. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. That's my question. I believe there is though too. Yeah. Same. Moving on to a segment we haven't done in a while called What Would You Do? It's just a mm, yeah. group of small little hypothetical situations that we put each other in here. And and we tell you what we would do in these situations. I'm going to ask you first. I haven't got to read any of these yet. So your company <laughs> has a no gifts from clients policy. Do you pretend to know nothing about it to keep an expensive watch? That a cu- oh sorry, there's more to keep to keep an a, an expensive watch that a grateful customer gave you. I thought that was implied. <laughs> it's okay. Um. Uh, did oh man, it depends on how long I've worked for this company. Like if I had just started out and somebody just gave this to me and I was just like, this motherfuckers, they say I can't take this. Um, I quit. Thank you for that gift. It was yeah, so nice. I was say, it depends on the company and how much I care to be there, honestly. <laughs> like, Am I willing to get watch. fired over it? Like, how much is this watch? Is there value if I can resell it? Like, there's got to be a lot going on here for me to accept it. Like, it's got to outweigh something. Cause I think what you just... do is you have your cousin or friend or somebody come in and give the manager a gift and Mm. see if they keep it and then if they keep it you can be like ha gotcha gotcha bitch (laughs) you 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 can't fire me for keeping my watch now (laughs) surprise motherfucker (laughs) i can't i know what you did (laughs) oh god yeah i don't know i for me it's yeah it's a situational i think there, it, it, there's, there's no right or wrong answer in my opinion on this. Well, I mean, the wrong answer is to keep. If you're breaking the policy, you don't break policy. That's just if you want to keep your job and you yeah. want to do your job. Like, because if I'm running a company and you're breaking my policy, I'm going to be pissed. And you yeah, should I'm get fire fired. Your ass. Yeah, yeah, you should get fired. Uh, but it, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a moral dilemma. I think there. <laughs> What yeah, else, honestly, guy? for me the for me the morality is like you give it to, you give me a gift, I'm taking a gift. But whatever. Yeah, that's true too. It's like you but I guess you just have to tell them, sorry, we're not allowed to accept gifts. Mm-hmm. Meet me in the alley. <laughs> Meet me in the club. <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> this one's great. A regular in yoga class always wears an overpowering perfume that makes it hard for you to breathe deeply. Do you ask her to lay off the scent? Yes. <laughs> so do I. Yeah, that's you yeah. are you are molesting my nose. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Motherfucker's are, getting nose raped right you now. You are forcefully <laughs> making me smell something that that inhibits my breathing. You're choking me. You're doing no different than if you were to put a bag over my head and squeeze it. I can't breathe because what you're bringing into this tiny room. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Now, I think if if you're outdoor, outdoors, maybe it'd be okay. I wouldn't say anything. I'd just maybe move to a different spot. Yeah. Walk away from her. But in an enclosed room, yeah, I would say, listen, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be that person. I just, I'm really having trouble breathing. Your, your your cologne or your perfume is really strong. Is there any way you could not wear it when you come into class or something like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'd be nice about it. But... Like, my mom is actually, like, deathly allergic to the point where, like, she walks. My brother can't even wear cologne because, like, if he she goes to hug her, hug, hug him, she will literally get dizzy and, like, faint. Like, it's just, it's, it's so much for her. 
This situation is exactly what we mean when we say the words, read the room. Read the room. Yeah. This is a, a perfect example of yep. what, of how to read a room. If you're going into a small room to do yoga, where you're going to be right next to a bunch of other people, surrounded by a bunch of other people, you guys are going to be getting hot and sweaty, mm-hmm. which is already going to have odors. It's own smells. Yep. You, you, and they have, there's other things that you can use that isn't overpowering. If you, if you're that body conscious about like the smells that are, that are coming out of you, first off, go see a doctor. Mm-hmm. Secondly, um, they have like deodorants that you can use. They have like, like spray deodorants that like will help to dry you and keep you nice neutralizing. and neutralizing, like neutralize like some of these odors, like to help you. Like there's other things that you can do, but like having a perfume when you know that this is a, a, an exercise that requires breathing like heavy breathing like i just yeah use common sense read the fucking room figure it out oh boy this next question i love that (laughs) i get to ask you this one Uh, it's so perfect that i get to ask you instead of the other way around i'm so happy it's this way (laughs) the director of a movie that you really want to be in will give you the part sky if you sleep with him do you do it? So, me being me, if I'm ever put in this situation where that's that's literally the ultimatum, I'd be like, all right, just give me a little bit to get ready. You best believe that I'm recording the whole fucking thing <laughs> and I'm holding this shit over him for the rest of his fucking life. You forced me to do something that I didn't want to do for a part that I really fucking wanted. Now I'm going to hold this for you, over your fucking head and you're going to give me every fucking part that I ever fucking wanted. Yeah. My question is, why is it bad if you do do that? Because you're being forced to sleep with somebody that you wouldn't right. normally sleep Just with. Just like you're being forced to go into work seven days a week to make money. Yeah, but that's different. Just like you're being forced. You're not being forced to be fucked. You're not being forced. Yes, you are. That is being forced. No, you're, be- you're not being you're forced. Giving- yes, let that me, is giving let me, you let a me decision. Let me clarify this. Yeah, you're making the decision to do it. You're not being forced. That is, that is, that's your job and your livelihood. So, okay, I don't ever want to be in acting anymore because, like, every time I try to go for something, I have to sleep with a person in order to get a job. This is just a movie that you really want to be in. But that's what I mean. Like, what do you think is going to happen the next time? Like, this isn't. We're not talking about next time, though. We're talking about this one instance. This one instance is still a force because this is something that you really want, and now you can't get it because the only way to get it is to be fucked by somebody that you don't want to fuck. Right. But again, the only way to do anything in the world is by doing things that you don't want to do, is what I'm trying to say. No, it's not. People do things they don't want to do because they feel like they don't have any other choice to do what they have to do. So how is that any different? Because this is something that the person really wants. For example, you. You have to, you want to roll so bad and this is going to be your career, but you have to be the most racist, hated person in the whole entire world. And you have to actively say all this shit that makes you feel like absolute shit and garbage. Otherwise, you can never be an actor. Do you do it or do you be an actor? Or do you you not do it? Doing it as a character? No, no, no. You're doing it as like you, as your person. Your opinions are now this, this, and this. Racist? You have to be racist. You I don't know be... how those things compare. Because I know with you, sex doesn't matter. It's just like, oh, it's just sex. It doesn't no, matter. No, that's not the situation at all. I, I'm just saying, no, there's no force. You're not being forced, is all I'm saying. I'm saying you're making the choice. You I'm just kind of asking. Are. I'm just you asking. You're being forced. I'm just asking that... what's, what's the difference. No, because you, you're being forced if you want to do this movie. There, it's a part that you really want. That right. a part that you want. So this but is. But nobody's something... physically grabbing you. Nobody's physically making you do anything. You. Nobody are... has to physically grab anybody. Nobody to force somebody is holding to do anything somebody. over you. Yes, he is. He's holding the part over him. Your job. And you know what's gonna happen? Okay. This person so... is gonna get blacklisted for saying no. Okay. Because now this person is gonna say, "Oh yeah, no, no, don't work with that person. She's crazy. She's this. This is what she wants to do." You can't tell me that that's not gonna happen. So yes, she's going to be forced and the answer is going to be yes okay so if i were a yeah breathe 
Uh, <laughs> if I were a, I were making a film, uh-huh. I can post on one of the the websites where where uh, you, d- casting directors post to to cast people for their movies. Right? There's mm-hmm. tons of them. Mm-hmm. You, anybody can post on there. If if I posted a, a role and said, uh, whoever books this role is required to sleep with me. Right? Mm-hmm. That that's just the stipulation of it. That's just a that's just a job requirement. Like a mm-hmm. like a degree. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm not forcing anybody to do it. That is an open forum. This is a director is specifically targeting a person and saying, hey, I want to sleep with you. If you don't sleep with me, you're not getting this part. That's your ultimatum. Either fuck me or get the fuck out of here. Right. Or he didn't say it like that. Guaranteed, you don't have to say it like that in order for it to be like that. It's called reading the room. It's called common, having common sense. It's called actually being in a situation before a million fucking times in my life and having this choice and making the choice and becoming poor because of this choice. Right. Uh, again, <laughs> this is just so a yes. one, <laughs> one instance thing. This is a one instance thing for you. But what I'm saying is like I've been in this situation and I was forced to make that decision. And I chose to not fuck the guy. And instead, I lost my job. Right. Which is so fucked that, up. I'm not that, saying that that's right in any way. That's what I'm saying. That's, I don't know why you're arguing saying. me like I am saying because that this is right. No, I'm not at all. Saying, I'm not saying that. You're saying that this is not a forced situation, but it is. That is a forced situation. To give somebody we an will, ultimatum. We will forever have to agree to disagree on what on this because. you Can you force somebody to do something without touching them? Yes or no? Absolutely. Can you manipulate? Exactly. So Absolutely. you can manipulate somebody by doing something forcefully without touching but them. But me That's having something that somebody else wants and saying this is how you can get it if you want it. That's not forcing somebody, is what I'm De- saying. Yes, it is, depending on what the fuck the situation is. And in this situation, it is. In the situation that you had described where it's an open forum, that's not, because it's an open fucking forum. It's for anybody to speak to grabs. This is a one-time situational where it's between two people who are individual or that are, are going about this. That's a different situation. Well, that's the that thing. We don't, have, we don't have... We don't have detail on this hypothetical situation we don't we don't know the details of this uh, so, so it's okay, hard the question, it, it, it's hard to the question now comes to you though same thing it's a it's a director of a movie and he wants to sleep with you if it's a guy no absolutely not no you wouldn't do it for the part that you wanted no the part that's going to give you like probably 50 million dollars to right be off with the a rip. guy no absolutely not hmm. absolutely not proud of you <laughs> it's not so a moral funny. thing. I just have. I just don't want to get screwed by a dude. It's just all there is to it. What if you're the one doing the screwing? No, I don't want to engage in sexual activity with a dude. <laughs> I was really hoping for you to be like, well. <laughs> now listen, I say this morally. <laughs> I say this, but if Steven Spielberg <laughs> walks in this room right now and says, "You're the next ET." <laughs> You get on your knees right now. I'm going to put a, a hole in the floor dropping down so fast. <laughs> Just to be ET. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> not even to be a character. No, I'm else. Just, Just going to be ET. Be he wants to. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh. <laughs> Do you do you think you look like E.T.? Is that why? No, I just really like E.T. <laughs> oh, I was like, because isn't just, he like... I, when I think Spielberg, I immediately just think E.T. That's just, <laughs> that's just where I go. I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. All right, that's next fair. one. <laughs> this is your yours to ask. Mm, the envelope, quote unquote, is being passed at work for a colleague who is getting married. For the fourth time. Do you still contribute? 
I didn't contribute the first three times. <laughs> I was going to say, bitch, you lucky I contributed the first time, if that. I didn't. Like, I didn't contribute no. any of the times. I'm not going to your wedding. I'm not buying you a fucking gift. I ain't doing shit. Like, you're a dumbass. Yeah. No, I'm not. You're you're at work. Read the room. <laughs> you're at work. <laughs> These are my work family. They're my work friends. I love them. Best I, friends forever. Yeah. I can't <laughs> do that. I can't do that. I Just no. fire me. <laughs> just fire me for not. That actually happened to me once. Not like this. This It was for a birthday party or something. It was like some party. And like, I did not like this chick that I worked with. I was just like, she is just a cunt and a half. I am. We just don't get along. Like she, she was one of those fake people that were like always smiling and like in people's faces. But then like just be a just like a spiteful, hateful bitch, like behind the scenes kind of thing. Mm. And I just I don't like fake people like that. So, like, I just didn't trust her. Yeah. Um, so, basically, like, most females. Um, but You said I did, wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, my hands are clean. It was not me that said it. But, like, so, like, it was going around that, like, she was having a party and she was, like, going to be doing some stuff. And, like, she had invited everybody. And, like, this other chick, like, came over to me. She's like, oh, are you going to so-and-so's party? And I was just like, no, I don't fucking like that bitch. She's like, wait, what? I was just like, yeah, no, I don't fucking like that bitch. I'm not going. I'm, I don't go to parties. I don't, I just don't want to go. And mm -hmm. she's like, oh, okay. And then she fucking told the girl what I said. So she came over to me and confronted me and was just like, you don't like me? Why don't you like me? And I was just like, because you're a bitch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't. I just don't fucking like you. And then she reported me to the manager. So oh, she should. That was fun. <laughs> Your fiance surprises you with a diamond engagement ring, but you don't like the ring at all, Skylo. You hate it. It's ugly. You don't want to wear it. Do you tell him, even if it will hurt his feelings? Um. Yes, for many, many reasons. Honesty. Um, first off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, honesty is the biggest thing for me. But, like, I, I just... I'm not a jewelry person in just in general. And, like, whoever... Shouldn't your fiancé know that? That's exactly what I was just going to say. Like, if he's my fiancé, then he should know that. But, like, honestly, like, I, I... I always say that, like, if a guy were to propose to me, I don't care if he takes a fucking onion ring from his, like, and uses that oh, to propose. You bro. know what I mean? Like, if somebody, if, the, if somebody proposes <laughs> to me without an onion ring, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> I just love the fact that he wants somebody to propose to him. <laughs> you don't think it could happen? <laughs> oh, I know it could happen. It has <laughs> happened in the past. I've seen it all the time. But, like, that, that's my thing. Like, I will tell you, like, hey, this totally does not look right on me. Like, does it or does it not? Because I don't think it does. But, like, I I appreciate it. Like, I, I will love it because they took the time to get me something like that regardless. But I'm going to tell him, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, it's beautiful. Blah. And like, and tell all my girlfriends, like, look how hideous this thing is. Like, that's I just I couldn't do that. I don't know. OK, that's fair. That's fair. I say I say, yeah, I, I say you have to tell him. That would be my because I'm just all about communication and honesty. Yeah. And like, I, I kind of feel like if, if, if it was that situation and then you just say, like, listen, like, you know, I really do love the fact that you did this. Like, why don't we go and pick something out together so that we can both kind of have like an input on something that's similar, but like just something that fits me better. Yeah. Like, that, I don't see why that would be a problem, but people are just too into their feelings, which, again, I wouldn't be with somebody who has that fucking heart of a feelings that I couldn't tell them the truth about right. something that they would be crying about. I'd be like, all right, well, this engagement is over. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, you really that bothered by me saying I don't like this ring? Like, yeah, it's, bye. Yeah. You got a weak, <laughs> you got a weak relationship in general. If, yeah, if that's the case. But uh, yeah, that is our what would you do segment. Let us know what you guys would do in those situations. Very curious to find out. We're gonna move on to something that uh, I, I know Sky probably has some opinions on, and I think I definitely do as well. But uh, we this is a a serious segment, believe it or not, and. Mm -hmm. 
it's a it's it's called break the stigma where we like to break stigmas we broke mm-hmm. a bunch of stigmas over here i feel like we, mm-hmm. we we've covered a lot of stigmas and there's so many more to cover this one is procrastination everybody yeah my entire life has told me that procrastination is bad mm-hmm bad, don't be a procrastinator bad 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 I'm inclined to disagree. Yeah. Uh, Me too. Mm Because I am a huge procrastinator. But with my (laughs) self-discovery, with ADHD, I found out the beautiful truth about procrastination. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is not what you guys think. (laughs) There is something called active procrastination, which is what most of us do. A lot of us know we have a deadline need to go ahead and get that deadline due, but because we know that that's happening, we tend to wait until the last minute because we are able to work a lot better under that type of pressure. So it's not that we, we're we forgetting about it and we don't want to do it. It's just that we're, we're calculating, we're planning in our heads like, okay, I know that I can do like this in this amount of time and I, it will take me this long and I can do, like you're just kind of doing that kind of procrastination and then there's passive procrastination where you don't you you unintentionally procrastinate like you you want to do the thing that you're supposed to do but like you're just kind of avoiding thinking about it um because you're just you you just have too much going on in your head and on your plate that Mm -hmm. that's the reason you start procrastinating is because you're just overwhelmed so that's the difference between the two active procrastination actually is very similar to people like um, people who actively procrastinate is very similar to people who do things on time. Literally like basically the same thing. It's just that's the way these people function. Some people some people want to do things early and get them over with. Mm -hmm. Some people want to do their other things and then they're like okay I'll allot this amount of time to do this. Correct. But right before it's due or right before I need to do it or whatever Mm -hmm. you know. Like and... I, if I have a like a party planned or something, mm-hmm. there is nothing that gets me moving faster than like cleaning up and preparing than the day before. Mm-hmm. I will literally wait until the night before and then just everything gets done to a perfection. Right. And I just, it's well, just that. Look at, look at me recently. I've moved, right? I, mm-hmm. I packed up like some of the stuff, you know, I did a little bit of packing here and there, mm-hmm. but for the bulk of the stuff. I did literally the day before that I moved everything Yeah. because, and, and that may look like that technically is procrastination, right? It's like, okay, I put that off to the last day possible Yep. and then I did it, but it's because I was using the stuff Yeah. all the way up. So I, the procrastination allowed me to use things that I wouldn't have been able to do had I done it all early. Yep, and prepared yourself. So there's like, that's where I say, like, I kind of feel like you kind of need a mix Mm -hmm. of the two types of procrastination. Obviously, passive procrastination, that's the one where if it gets too overwhelming and like you don't have a steady plan for it, that's when it can be bad because there are going to be more consequences. You're not going to meet your deadlines. You're going to fail a test that you were supposed to study for, or you're not going to get to be able to move out in time, you know, things like that. Right. Um. But the act of procrastination, I think that's the more healthier one that a lot of people tend to do, which is I think people need to take a step back and really look at what kind of procrastination they're doing. Why am I procrastination? Like, is this active or is this passive? Is this good or is this bad? How can I how can I change it? So now I'm actively procrastinating, procrastinating mindfully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think there's much more to say on it, honestly, other than just it's all in moderation. Everything in moderation is the mm-hmm. the key, I think. Yeah. So stop letting people make you feel bad if you're a procrastinator. As long as you get mm-hmm. the job done and do what you're supposed to do, doesn't matter when you do it. Just do it. Exactly. Just do it. And Just uh, do it. Like Nike like says. Like Nike and Shia LaBeouf say, just do it. Do it. <laughs> Moving on to our movie of the week. Uh, This was a good one. I was excited about this one because we we watched the first one. 
which was really mm-hmm. good. The first one of this was called Knives Out. Yep. And this week's movie of the week is the sequel called The Glass Onion. Which wasn't really a sequel, but it was like, a, a, it was just. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't technically call it a sequel because it was kind of new people, right? Yeah, uh, they only kept the same like uh, uh, detective. Yeah, whatever but his it name technically is. was just. I think it was just later on though. I think it's technically considered a sequel. Yeah, actually, yeah. it's a sequel. <laughs> but it came out in 2022. Uh, it stars just massive stars. It had Daniel Craig, you know, Bond, James Bond. I uh, never seen a Daniel Craig James Bond, by the way. I've seen one, and the one that I saw, I really liked. And I'm not a I, James Bond guy; like, I'm not a big, but I really liked the one he did uh, he that cut. I saw. Uh, Edward Norton. I mean, mm-hmm. Fight Club. Anybody? <laughs> Dave Bautista, Kate Hudson, uh, Catherine Hahn. Like, it had so many huge stars in it. Yeah. It was and, good. Uh, it's basically just another murder mystery, kind of like uh, what was it, Clue or whatever it was. Yeah, Clue. One of and those knives out. Of... Yeah. And it was directed by Ryan Johnson, written by Ryan Johnson, and it was really good. I liked it a lot. I got sucked in immediately. And I thought I knew Same. what was going on the whole time, and I genuinely didn't. <laughs> I think I followed it more than you did. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> Cuz I'm like you. I think I can I can read a lot of times like what's going to happen in movies. Mm-hmm. I'm really good Especially at it. Especially because you're an actor, so you can kind of see things a lot faster sometimes, I feel like. Yeah. And um, well, and I just know, yeah, it's just I I know what they try to do with with yeah. these types of movies. So I kind of yeah. know what to look for, I guess. Yeah. There's always foreshadowing in these movies. Always. 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 And, uh, people, a lot of it's very subtle. You'll never even notice it, but it's mm-hmm. there if you, if you know where to look. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, th- I think uh, I recommend this movie, uh, but I recommend watching Knives Out first. Yeah, to get a good sense of like what you're going to get into. Because both of them are really good. You know, like I, I really love the whodunits, like, because... I, you know me. I'm, I'm very. The minute I start watching something, I'm trying to figure out like, okay, what's gonna happen? What's the plan? Because I like, I like to know. I like to know these things. And then I also like to know like, shit, I was wrong. Like that was awesome. And that's how I judge movies mm-hmm. is by how far off I am. The more yeah. far off I am, the better the movie is because to me, then it's not predictable. Right. Then it's more exciting for me. But, like, the more on brand I am with the movie, then I'm just like, all right, it was okay. It was yeah. just predictable. Like, it's just like every other movie that I think I saw. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. And I think that's why I really like the whodunits because it's it really makes you question, like, so many different things. I agree. I agree. I love the mystery movies. Movies like this are movies that I could watch every day of my life. I love these type I- of movies. Same. Uh, and it's just, it's a great cast. It had a lot of comedy in it, which was really funny. And, and everybody worked well together in this movie. I thought it was uh, solid. I recommend it. Movie of the week, The Glass Onion, folks. But check out Knives Out Watch it. first. Yes. Am I the asshole? Yes. Oh. <laughs> we have a segment oh, here called <laughs> Am I the Asshole Now? It's a fairly new segment where we... Uh, we read these people's personal stories where they want to know if they're the the bad guy in the situation or not. This one uh, is titled, Am I the Asshole for Not Telling Anyone Outside My Immediate Family That I Am Getting Married? Now, we'll tell you the story, but that's the title. My partner uh, and I, who have been together for 15 years, Never planned on marrying, but have been committed to each other and happy together. On the advice of our financial planner, we decided to make it official as it will save us a ton of money on insurance, taxes, retirements, etc. We aren't seeing it as a big deal. Nothing will change for us except our finances. So we aren't interested in having a wedding. I would love to simply go to City Hall, sign the papers, and be done with it. But I know what my mother would be. I know that my mother would be upset if she weren't included. 
With that in mind, we decided to have a small ceremony in our home and invited our parents and siblings only, no one else. We decided to not tell anyone until after the ceremony was over so no one would feel excluded or make a big deal out of it. Afterward, we will send paper announcements to our extended family and friends to let our loved ones know. My mother is very unhappy with the situation. Very is capitalized here. Very <laughs> unhappy with the situation. She wants me to make announcements, have a big ceremony and reception, buy a wedding dress, the whole shebang. The reason she's given the reasons she has given me include I'm afraid I might accidentally say something to one of my siblings, to if your cousin got married and didn't tell me until afterward, I would be so hurt. To don't you want everyone to celebrate your day? My anxiety is through the roof and she's making me feel terrible about not having a wedding. But that's not at all what we want. Am I being selfish for not including more people in a ceremony that means very little to me and my partner? Mm. <laughs> I know my answer, but what's, what's your, your answer? Um, <laughs> and I have a feeling your answer, you're about to say my answer. Um, the mom is an asshole. She's not an asshole. What I would do at this point, if my mom was putting me through all of that, I'd be like, okay, you know what? We're going to go to City Hall. Fuck you guys. We're done. We're out. Nobody's coming. Yeah, and I don't care. I don't to, care what these people say. You have to treat it like a child that won't share. Yeah, because it's like, okay, you know we've been together for 15 years. We're not we we've said it. We were never planning on getting married. And this is only this is for a, financial. Yeah. This is a financial decision. This isn't anything. This isn't like a romantic kind of like, let's all get married and celebrate. This is like, ah, shit. Now we got to fucking get married before we fucking get retired. All right, fine. Like, let's sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's literally all that is, is to make their lives easier. So for them to want to make it a bigger thing than it is, that's on the mom. Like, OK, yeah. you guys go fucking do a ceremony without me. Like, I, I there is no ceremony money to be had so yeah. No. no yeah this one's not on you lady it's not yeah uh it's not anybody's business business it's not anybody's it's not. decision on what you do with your wedding or your life or your life like that was that was always been a thing for me because like my my mom would always try to like my quinceanera like all like my birthday parties it was always like what she wanted what she wanted and I was just like I just I just want pizza man I just want to play video games and eat pizza like that's it right I, I skipped my quinceanera <laughs> yeah yeah did, did you have it, a bot right? mitzvah yeah you did I'm proud okay. of you yeah I'm proud of you too <laughs> yeah but I think that there's a a nosy component that people have that really needs to be checked sometimes yeah a lot of people like, i i genuinely this is going to sound awful but i genuinely do not care what people do with their lives as long as they're not hurting me or anybody do what yeah. you want to do do what you want to do it's totally fine like just Go be happy. Like you want to go I, have crazy orgies in the forest. Do it. I don't care. Yeah. Go have fun. Go have at it. I don't I'm know sure why people are so nosy. Are they just bored? You know what it is? It's because you got to remember, there's 8 billion. I will always say this. There's 8 billion people in the fucking world. And every single person is unique and different. And no one can understand or fathom because they see, like, society. And they see what they see on TV. And they see what they see on magazines. And they're like, well, everybody has to be the same person. And everybody has to do the same things. And everybody has to conform to everything else. No, we don't. We're all fucking individuals. We all have our own fucking minds, our own values, our own morals, our own thoughts, our own ideals. So let's do what the fuck that we want to do to make us happy. Yeah, I agree. I I, I just I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just But no, this was this was a pretty easy one for me to answer. Uh it's and like I said earlier, and the reason we got in like a a little debate earlier is because I try to just look at things from the other side. Mm -hmm. Subjectively. Uh, so I don't want anybody thinking that I'm like some like misogynist or anything like that from earlier. <laughs> I just want that to be known. I, I just genuinely try to look at things and talk about them, play devil's advocate. 
Yeah, I was gonna say you're you're somebody who definitely like shows two sides of the sword. You know what I mean? Like, right. And I think that's what makes our conversation so good because like you literally make me think about like the things that are coming out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> in this situation, I I can't I can't defend the mom here. Yeah, I I, I've tried. I genuinely am like I get that you are you want to celebrate. I get that. But it's just, it's not your life. Yeah. It's not your life. Throw it's your own not. party. Yeah. Like, the fact that she's in, like, that your daughter is is inviting you, you should be fucking grateful. I think that's another thing, too, and I've been teaching my kid this, is people tend to not show any kind of gratitude. Gratitude will go a long way in your life. And I know that people are like, well, I'm not grateful because I have all these bad things. Don't be grateful for the bad things, obviously. Be grateful for the shit that you have currently because there's other people that don't have the shit that you have. This bitch, you have a wonderful relationship with your daughter that you're about to fucking throw out the goddamn window because she's actually going to invite you to her fucking wedding she is 49 years old she is an old lady she does not need to have you there but she wants to invite you just because you're her mom there are people who i know that don't get that opportunity so shut the fuck up be grateful that she's including you and just just do what she wants because it makes your daughter happy that's your daughter. You're supposed to do things for her. Well, let's break down her reasons. There's three reasonings. First one is, I'm afraid I might accidentally say something to one of my siblings. I'm guessing she that's means bullshit. before the wedding, right? Like, yeah. Give it away. Okay. Um, that's a you problem. You don't mm-hmm. trust yourself. Yep. So that's a you thing. Uh, second one. If your cousin got married and didn't tell me until afterward, I would be so hurt. Again, mm-hmm. a you thing. Mm-hmm. That's that's reason that's number two. Both both are her feelings of, and how it affects her. Mm-hmm. Third one: Don't you want everyone to celebrate your day? Again, her wanting to celebrate. Yeah. She wants this, the celebration, not the I mean, not the daughter. Yeah, like obviously she doesn't because she said that from the beginning that she did not want a ceremony she did not want to tell everybody so no she does not want everyone to celebrate her day right. Obviously. because it's not it's not a day she said, like, don't it's you just... want that no that's what you want yeah like she's like that's that's literally what i said I, I don't want like i don't want that i don't want like and that was that was me too like i've never wanted to get married mm-hmm. like ever like, I've always said that if, if it ever were to happen, take me to a Chuck E. Cheese's, buy me some fucking pizzas. Like, let's go to Dave and Buster's. I'd rather take the money and just go on fucking vacation and travel around the world and have fun and create memories if I ever to ever. I don't want to have a useless party that people are going to come to. Like, for what? There's mm-hmm. no reason for it. Literally none. No, I agree. I just, I don't get it. Moving on and back in time. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I like to be a radio host. I can tell. Uh, <laughs> the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Uh, <laughs> the the uh, the next that's that's not our next. That's not our next segment. Next segment uh, does take us back to that time frame though. Nostalgia, where we return back to. Things from our childhood, and we talk about things. And you were just talking of one. Chuck E. Cheese. Mm-hmm. Chuck My E. Cheese. My kid has been obsessed with Chuck E. Cheese ever so since he that was answers born. answers my question. There <laughs> are still Chuck E. Cheeses around. Yes. However, they are far and few in between because other places have grown and have been better. I think there's like two of them that are close to me ish that i can i can get to fine but like yeah they're they're hard to come across yeah they're not that great either their pizza definitely has has gotten a lot better i honestly can't remember i may have had chuck e cheese maybe once (laughs) maybe twice when i was a kid i don't really if we did go there often i don't remember it but that's not (laughs) To say it, we didn't. I just, my memory is garbage. I never did go until I was 21. 
This is the first time I ever 21. went to a Chuck E. Cheese on day one. <laughs> and that's a... I don't know. It's kind of creepy. Like, why is a rat there? Rats are intelligent. What do you but mean? Nobody want, nobody wants to associate their food with rats. You know what I mean? Maybe they did because they were trying to hide the fact that they actually had rats in their kitchen. Uh, is that what it was? Duh. Smart. Makes the perfect amount of sense. Smart. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could. I honestly, I don't have much nostalgia on this one just because I did. They had like arcade games or something, right? Or no? Yes, they had arcade games like um, the uh, the interactive games, like the tickets and stuff, so that you can like get prizes, like a bunch of stuff that you can do. It's like I said, it's kind of like a like a miniature Dave and Buster's. The the one by me has this little like it almost looks like a little carousel, not a carousel, but uh, is it a carousel? No. What's the wheel thing? I'm gonna need. A At lot fairs. more detail. The, the giant Ferris fucking... wheel? Yes, Ferris wheel. Thank you. <laughs> they have one of those in the one that I have that sits like three. And it's like, it's small, but it's big. And you can just like sit in it and just like takes you on this little miniature ride, which mm-hmm. is adorable. But yeah, that's about it. Well, I don't know. I have no desire to go to one. Now, this next one. Uh, is a you thing because I don't I don't really remember much of this, but uh, Doctor mm. Katz, what what yes. is it? What was professional Dr. therapist? He was a therapist. Um, he basically was going through stories with like different people that would come into his office, and he would just kind of like uh, it was like a Comedy Central thing, and he would just so was try the cartoon. To- yeah, it was a cartoon. It was a cartoon. It was, um, have you ever seen The Critic? Negative. Oh my god, there are so many shows that you need to see. This is, ah, I, there was so much about this this show that it was just, people would come in and like, like, reveal all of these secrets to him. And he would try to analyze them, but like, in a really fucked up way. <laughs> Like, okay. where you would just kind of be like what what are you what that's not that's not helpful information at all like it was just very ironic information that they w- that he would give them or very sarcastic it was just it was okay. snarky it yeah, was i don't show. remember that one that's one of my that's one of the nostalgia ones that i i don't have uh i don't have memory of but again i feel like the art style is something that you would like because the art style in that show is very similar to how you draw. Okay. That's fair. Ooh, I do remember the next one, though. These were cool. <laughs> I beg to differ. These oh, were God. cool. I liked these. The Rainforest Cafe. Uh, where it just um, felt like, genuinely felt like you were just in a forest. <laughs> a rainforest. A rainforest. I call that home. <laughs> what? Because in Ecuador, they had rainforests. Ah, gotcha. (laughs) It was just home. I wasn't a fan of the food, but, like, I loved going there just for the the atmosphere, the ambiance. Yeah. And I was very I gotta be honest. I don't remember the food. I don't. The food was terrible. I don't remember the food at all. So it must not have been terrible. No, it was horrible. Uh, it was n- you couldn't eat it. I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty bougie when it comes to food, but mm-hmm. like I still will eat basically anything from anywhere. Like I will do my best to eat whatever. I none of the food from there was good. I just no. Oof. It That's was rough. bad. Terrible. Yeah. Well. I'll have to try it as an adult now because that's the thing. My taste buds have changed so much growing Over the like years. since since the last time I had Rainforest Cafe. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> they have changed. I used to hate mustard and onions and all of that stuff. I love all. Yeah, of that. I, I don't know. It's really strange. <laughs> really strange. Uh, what's the next one? We have. Ooh, you remember this one? Yeah. Can you sing it for us? Rice Aroni, the San Francisco treat. The Rice Aroni <laughs> jingle. What happened to it? I don't know. <laughs> why, why did it go away? I used is, to love those like commercials. Is Rice Aroni still a thing? 
Yes, it is. It's still a thing. I used to literally cook that every day at um in college. And everybody would come in and be like, oh, she's making rice and roni again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, so that was my go-to meal was just a box of rice and roni. <laughs> okay. I, I, I dig it. I, rice and roni. But yeah, I don't know what happened to the jingle. They need to bring back like the 90s style commercials. Yeah. You want to make me watch ads? Give me that. Give me that stoner ad where she's on the couch melted into it. <laughs> you know that that one where it says Ooh, "weed bad," <laughs> but then like do one now. Now that we're like legalizing it, where she like gets inflated, she like comes back. <laughs> Can they bring the same person? That yeah, was, no, it needs yeah, to be the exact same person, exact but she needs person. to fade back. Like she needs to inflate. <laughs> and be like good again because that's how it is when you smoke weed. You're fine again after a few minutes. In this case, a few decades. <laughs> I remember that commercial too. It was so fucking. Weird. We need to bring it back, but she needs to be inflated now. That's all remember, I'm saying. I remember watching it as a kid and I was just like, wait. Why is her body deflating <laughs> like that? I don't understand. I'm never going to smoke weed. I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> Jeez. Bring back the 90s commercials and I'll watch them. Genuinely, I will. Uh, jock jams. Come on and jam. Come on and get the jam. Jock jam. That, you know, no. me? Just, Just you. Okay. Uh, the, okay. the jock jams... They had, was that, that was like a kid's bop thing, right? Or was it, did they just have the actual real songs on it? I can't remember. They, it was both. Um, it was like a mixture. It was like, a, they would take real songs and kind of like mix them, like DJ them. Mm-hmm. Kind of with like other songs and like, it would just be like a 20 minute track of like, 30 different songs in different ways. Mm, I just yeah. dropped everything on my keyboard. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jock Jams, there's Kids Bop, there was Now. You remember Now? Mm-hmm. I still, do, I still listen to Now. Of course you do. I, I have to say high. that when it comes to music, every genre, my favorite genre is in the 90s. It's the 90s version of that genre. That's like, for some reason, 90s music just was on a different level. We have lost you. Oh, and you were back, I think. Well, I think. Yes. Yep. And I don't know. The best music, best TV show, everything was from the 90s. Like, Can we go back to the 90s? Yes. I want to go back. Jeez. Take me back. Moving Take on to Natural Paradise Selection. Thing. Which is just a another reason to just join <laughs> join the alien side when they invade. Uh, natural selection. These are real warnings on real life products that just should never have been needed to have been said. But on this one, it's a wheelbarrow, and the warning. Not intended for highway use. But why? I don't even know what they mean by that. You can't just get just in like, it and... Did somebody just pull it behind their car and on a freeway? Or was somebody no. just pushing it down the freeway? I think somebody was like actually sitting in it and like going down Because they're not motorized. The they're not motorized, so like how... How are they going down the freeway? I need to know. It's downhill. There's like the freeway downhill. Ah, uh, but there's not wheels on the back. It's <laughs> feet. Well, a wheelbarrow only has one wheel and it's on the front. Yeah, but like they're just going downhill. And if you're going downhill, gravity will help push it down. It's not going to go very far. So the far. feet are just yeah. scraping on the road? Yeah. Yep, I'm going to yep. need you to step away from this conversation. <laughs> What's the next one we have here? <laughs> Not intended for use as a dental drill. 
A carpenter's drill. Oh. Ah, oh, I was thinking like a like a one of those like little handheld drill things that you that are, like you just twist, you grab in the center, and it's like a C shape thing that you, mm, you, yeah, you no. grab and twist, and that you. Oh, mm. oh. So this has been used. Somebody's used this as a, a, a like mm. a carpenter's drill on their yeah. teeth. Teeth. Ah. That mm. hurts me mm. to think about. <laughs> I, yeah, don't, I don't. I like don't it. have sensitive teeth. I don't think, but I do. That hurts me to think about. I have sensitive teeth, and that just yeah. I don't. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't I, like that it. That sounds. What What could they possibly have been doing? I don't know. Maybe they had a bad toothache and they couldn't even afford to go to the dentist, and that was the only way to get the tooth pulled. Was... You know pliers at that point. <laughs> Needle nose pliers. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> Back to the 90s. Maybe they didn't have needle nose pliers and all they had was a carpenter's drill. Oh. They were like, tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> natural selection. That's why this is natural selection. Just let them do it. Let them do it. Let them. Let them. Let them. It's fine. All right. This is not to be used for signing checks. Guy. <laughs> And you would that think, okay, true. maybe a crayon, or maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe they're talking about markers. You wouldn't want to use a marker or a crayon or a colored pencil, or a pencil in that matter. Uh, yeah. But no, this was on a bottle of vanishing, or no, this was on a pen that had vanishing ink. Imagine being that asshole that does that. Like, That's kind of genius. You're just like, okay, you got to sign this contract. Yeah, just sign All it right. in invisible ink. Just sign it in invisible ink, and then you go to court. You know people like, have done that. You oh, know people have done percent. that. Because nobody, once you sign that, they never looked at that document again. Honestly, and that's why people get things notarized now. Mm-hmm. For things like this, I guarantee you, this is this is where notary became like yeah. a fucking huge deal. Notaries weren't a thing. Fun fact, notaries weren't a thing until Vanishing Ink became a thing. <laughs> That's not true at all. None of I mean, it could be. I just made it, it up. Be. It could be true, but I don't think it, it is. True. I think notaries have been around for a while. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably why people are using notaries, though, because it's like, we need something official here. Yeah. And this is the only way. It is the only way. Uh, the next <laughs> one is do not eat. Sky. <laughs> Toner. Why? Who? When me? Which? Which? Honestly, if you're stupid enough to fucking eat toner, then I just say let him. That's why. I've, <laughs> that's why this is called natural selection. <laughs> Once again, let him do it. <laughs> just let him do it, because there should be no reason whatsoever anyone should be eating toner. It's fucking toner. Maybe that's what they thought would get them like in shape, get them toned. I'm so fucking done with you right now. I I'm can't gonna need think you. of any other. If they're stupid enough to eat it, they're stupid enough to think that. <laughs> this is true. Right? This is this is plausible. They're like, oh, you know this what? is a toner. Oh, I got to eat some of this and I'll, it'll tone me up. That's I believe me. that that... You That's think I, What's sad is it sounds like I'm, I'm being satirical there. It sounds like I'm making fun of... I'm genuinely saying that that actually could happen. People could genuinely yes. think like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Dave in our live chat says, mmm, toner tacos. <laughs> and that just made me laugh. I... <laughs> <laughs> toner tacos is going to be the name of my band. Jesus fucking Christ. But you know what? It's like... I, I just... I just... <sighs> I don't want to think that we live in a world that that's what people think. But we do. I can understand if you're foreign and you don't know the word. But like we have we literally have tiny computers in our hands that if you're not sure about something about eating you can, something, <laughs> you can literally take a picture of it and search Google. Just for the picture, and it'll probably say, hey, dumbass, do not eat. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just... just critical thinking here, folks. 
Moving on. Use <laughs> like. This next one says you. The warning is use like regular soap. <laughs> the product. Soap. I want to know what else you would do with the soap. I that... want to know what is not regular soap. <laughs> I thought soap was just soap. soap. <laughs> Didn't know there was irregular soap out there. <laughs> Maybe they mean like a soap bar is regular and then liquid soap is irregular. I don't think so. It's soap. Soap is soap. And no matter what form it comes in, it's soap. Yeah. How do you use any soap differently than soap? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I've always been, I've always never liked bars of soap, though. Ever me in my neither. entire they life have I ever me. liked bars of soap. Well, this isn't true. There's only one kind of bar of soap that I use, and it's for my face. I only wash my face with it. That's fair. Um, I mean, if it's only you using it, that's, that's fine. But I don't like using, like, a bar of soap. at some. If I go to somebody's house and I go to the restroom and all they have is a bar of soap, I hate I hate it. I'm I mad. hate it. Yeah. I'm mad at you, just so you know. <laughs> I am angry with you if all you gave me was a bar of soap. No, when I was growing up, my uh, my mom used to go to like the dollar store and buy like a pack of like those bars of soaps, like a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So when people came to the house, like she would just give them their own bar of soap because she didn't want them using her soap to like dirty her soap. She'd be like, here, this one's yours. Wow. <laughs> you fucking disgusting motherfucker. Don't, Don't use touch box. my soap. <laughs> Don't touch my which soap. Which is self-cleaning. <laughs> I, I I get it honestly. I'm, I think I'm for once in agreement with your mom on this one. <laughs> I mean, or she could just get you know some liquid soap and be done with it. Well, she does now, but okay. All right, we are at the end of the show. We like to end it with a hypothetical question. Every... Already, oh, we're there already. That Jeez. fast, boom, boom, Jesus. slam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Come back. I'll do Holy it again. Crap. Uh, you gotta find out either how or when you die. You have to find, you or to, you get you get to, to. you you get <laughs> to find. <laughs> words is hard. You get to find out either how or when you die, which. Do you choose? Um. Hmm. Ah, oh, this is so hard. Okay. If I know when, then I can live my life to the fullest and do whatever it is that I want to do. But if I know how, it's going to depend on how I die. Like, if I die at a heart attack, then I'm just like, that could be tomorrow, and that could be fucking 30 years from now. Uh, when? You know what? It's going to be when. I'd rather know when. I think I would rather know when as well. I was initially thinking how, because I I thought, well, I'll just if I get hit by a bus, I'll just avoid buses. You know. Avoid crossing streets, avoid yeah. <laughs> But it, that's not the situation. The situation is you die in no matter yeah. what. So no matter what. Either how or when. I don't think I want to know how, but I think I think when would be a would be my choice as well. Just because of that. You don't you can't change it. Yeah, that's true. Change. It's final destination. You can't change your outcome. Yeah, that's true. So what At would least. you choose? What would you room readers choose on the hypothetical question? You get to find out either how or when you die. Which would it be? Let us know. Guys, that's our show. That's crazy. It's uh, one of those uh, days where the sun stayed out. The rain didn't interfere. <laughs> we actually had internet, as far as I know. I think that uh, it's been a good show it's been fun we had some debate which was nice this has been season three episode seven we do have our discord up we will have the links to everything that we talked about uh that had links that had stories with them we will put those in our discord you can find out all of our social media uh find all of it on our link tree uh social media find us on twitter 
Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. And everywhere. Dis- we recommend you guys join the Discord because that's where a lot of the fun stuff's happening. You can interact with the community and, and meet other room readers, like minded people who know how to use common sense. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, and can have like level headed debates like me and Lop here without mm-hmm. getting into your face. Agree to disagree. Right. We agree to disagree every day, all the time. Yeah. So we do. <laughs> that's that but that's good. We I like the healthy debate and I think that uh it's what we need more of in this world if we're gonna move forward, forward. as a society. Am I missing anything before we head out, Sky? Um no, but uh, definitely, if you are interested in becoming one of our sponsors, uh, hit us up. We are looking for new sponsors mm-hmm. um, in the upcoming. One of our latest ones is Not Just Pets, which is also our pet store. Use code NSCS for an additional 5% off um, of your total price and an additional 5% uh, for charity that gets mm-hmm. donated, which is awesome. Yeah. So, yay. Gotta love helping the charity and, and the animals. Of course, animals is where it's all at. Uh, anytime I think of charities, I immediately go to animals first <laughs> before Same. humans, which is probably bad, but it's just, it is what it I is, mean, folks. I love animals. People. That's true. That's true. That's true. Mm. I, I'm i very uh, inclined to help things that can't help themselves. That's literally my motto of life. I want to help those that can't help themselves. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's the it's it's just good to do charity and help <laughs> when and where you can. Guys, this has been our show. I'm Jalopy again. This is Skylo, season three, episode seven in the books. We'll be back next Saturday, same time, same place. Mm-hmm. Until mm-hmm. then, folks. One thing to always remember: read, read the, the room. room. Thank you.